In part one, I walked through premium tier travel credit cards, comparing general travel credit cards to hotel specific cards. Now what I wanna do is get a little bit more specific and compare some of these cards individually, side by side for you to help determine the value of these cards and what may be the best fit for you. So now I'm gonna walk you through three comparisons of some of the cards we just explored. And some of this is subjective. I've pulled some of the top points of consideration. Feel free to pause any of these screens comment down below with any questions that you have. So based on the review so far, I think you can see that the Ritz Carlton card and the Sapphire Reserve, both from Chase, are competitors in a sense. The annual fee of the Sapphire Reserve is slightly higher at 550, but it comes with the welcome offer or sign-up bonus of 60,000 Chase Ultimate Rewards points with a minimal value there with the 50% boost in the Chase portal at a $900 value, whereas the Ritz Carlton card has no welcome offer. Both cards have a $300 travel credit. The Sapphire Reserve travel credit is slightly easier to use, but equal value there. And lounge access, I've highlighted the Sapphire Reserve because it also includes Chase lounges. As I mentioned, there's only two of these today, but a lot more coming. So that's subjective in terms of the value. They both have priority pass with restaurants, which is great. The top earning categories of each, this is really where you want to determine, are you looking for that general, more flexible travel currency or a Marriott specific earning card, right? So that's the difference in the earning categories here. And then the statuses or credits, the Ritz-Carlton card comes with gold elite status, 15 elite nights and an 85K award night, whereas the Sapphire Reserve's main value are the transfer partners and that 50% boost on your points. And this is a bit of a unique comparison that I wanted to showcase side by side, the American Express Hilton Honors Surpass card and the Chase Sapphire Preferred, which is the little brother of the Sapphire Reserve. The Hilton Surpass card has a slightly higher annual fee, but a slightly higher valuation on the welcome offer based on the 170,000 Hilton Honors points compared to 60,000 Chase Ultimate Rewards points, which is the public offer for the Sapphire Preferred. That's subjective. You can get more value than $750 out of those points by transferring them out to transfer partners. But just to showcase some of the basics here, the credit, a $200 Hilton credit, which is broken down into these bizarre quarterly credits of $50 or an annual $50 hotel credit. Neither card gets lounge access. And the earning categories, this caught my eye with the surpass card because there is some strength to the earning categories. Now keep in mind, this is only earning you Hilton Honors points, but 6X on dining, groceries, and gas. So essentially around 3X back in those categories, and then 4X on retail. Uh, somewhat of a catch-all card, whereas the Sapphire Preferred, the strength there is dining and online groceries and select streaming services, and then you get 5X through the travel portal. And then the statuses and credits. The Surpass gets you gold status and a free night after spending 15K on the card. Whereas the Sapphire Preferred gets you a 25% boost on the points if you book them in the portal or the transfer partners that you get access to through Chase. And now for a battle of three heavyweights. And these are all from American Express, that being the Platinum Card, the Bonvoy Brilliant Card, and the Hilton Aspire. The annual fees are all pretty similar, the Aspire being slightly lower, but the welcome offer or sign-up bonus, if you can get the 150,000 point welcome offer from the platinum card that valuation at a minimum is worth fifteen hundred dollars but more than likely you're going to be able to get three thousand plus in value whereas the bonvoy brilliant the welcome offer nothing special and the aspire card has a decent welcome offer the travel and food credits i had to break these down into a few categories but the travel and food credits a lot of similarities just in terms of the platinum card and the aspire I would say that the Brilliant card comes in slightly less in terms of the value, but it's one big credit with a dining credit that's broken down into $25 monthly, whereas a Platinum card, you get the digital entertainment credit, the Uber credit, the airline credit, the hotel credit, and some others with the Saks credit, Equinox, Walmart Plus. So the list kind of goes on with the Platinum card. I would say that the value is slightly higher there, but the Aspire card credits are extremely valuable as well lounge access, the platinum card being the only one that comes with lounge access and that being Centurion, Delta Sky Clubs, Priority Pass, so tons of value with that. And then the top earning categories, the platinum card 
really the only value in earning categories is the flights booked directly, uh, or you do get 5X on flights and hotels in the portal. Whereas the other two cards, the strength lies within their earning at their hotel properties. So either Marriott with the Bonvoy Brilliant or Hilton with the Aspire. Now the Aspire also is a bit of a travel catch-all with 7X on flights and car rentals, and that could be direct or in the Amex portal, which is nice. And then 7X on dining. So even with the valuation of the Hilton points, you're still looking at somewhere around 3.5 to 4X on those categories. So pretty nice. Whereas the, the Bonvoy Brilliant, really it's only valuable with Marriott properties. And then the status and award nights, the platinum card does get you gold status with Marriott and Hilton. It also gets you a clear membership and access to the transfer partners. It's hard to put value on that, but there is a ton of additional value in those transfer partners if you use them. Whereas the Bonvoy Brilliant and the Hilton Aspire, it's more about the free night awards, the top level status, getting Platinum Elite with Bonvoy and Diamond with Hilton. You get the award night with both. You get clear with the Hilton Aspire and then TSA Pre or Global uh, Entry with the Bonvoy Brilliant. So tons of value and benefits with these cards. Personally, I feel like there's a place in everyone's wallet for one or multiple hotel cards if you travel at least a little bit. It's all about weighing the pros and cons and determining what fits your lifestyle, if it's status that you're looking for, free night awards, or just more of a general travel currency. Again, I appreciate your time. Make sure you click the like button and subscribe to the channel if you want to get more content like this. And again, until next time. Thank <music> you.